Bill and Stacey. So if I waffle, I'm just going to waffle out there, guys. I'm just going to waffle for the YouTube because we're live on YouTube now. So I just want to say we're live on both on TikTok and YouTube. This is the first time I've ever done a multi video kind of thing. It took us ages to set up loads of technical difficulties as always. So hello, YouTube. Hello, TikTok. Right. We're, all, we're, we're rocking it. So if I, I'll give both things my attention if I can get professional with this. But what? I wanted to do was share all this document I've come across and I'll try and get the address for it. I haven't got the address written down. It's from uh, a website that I came across, I think called, uh, I'll try and find it. I'll, uh, by the, it we'll, we'll come across it by the end of the thing anyway. But what this is, is a document. Um, a lot of it is redacted. Um, that has been put together during all the recent, um, all right, still, Bill. Sorry, I only just saw. All right, Savage Casha. I've only just saw these comments. Please bear with me if um, I'm a little slow reacting to the comments. What this is is um, all part of the whole saga with the Mark Stone stuff and the the reviews and um, what you call them, kind of reviews and things like that. Um, looking at at the old. Uh, policing situation and things like that so what we've got here is actually a trade craft manual i'm trying not to ignore the youtube lot, uh, not that anyone's going to be watching it on i don't think but um we, we have got one person watching on youtube um but the special demonstration squad basically was later known as the public order intelligence unit the unit that does a lot of things really they they um kind of monitor the, the situation with um, historically with with Irish uh, football hooliganism um, protesting activism uh, environmental and also pacifists the whole, this whole thing and this whole thing that I'm still also understanding is is that you don't need to be some mad lunatic who's an actual physical security threat that they are actually, under this, as you will find out, under this whole umbrella, that pacifists are seen as actually, we need to keep tabs on what's going on here. Um, so we'll go straight into this document. This document was actually written by the bloke, I think, if I've, I've got my facts right, you might need to double check this, but hopefully my facts are right, set up the SDS, the Special Demonstration Squad, his name was Bob Lambert. He was one of the men that was in the newspapers. There was so there was a whole bunch of men that had relationships with women um, that were protesters and activists, and um, they didn't know that their boyfriend and their husband was um, was a police officer. They had no clue for years. And can you imagine the mental health effects that you just you, that it has on these people and people in their lives that they've trusted, that they've had bonds with, that they've back and forth and question it's so so deep and the fact this is even real is absolutely mental as this has all come out but i'll get to the juicy i'll get to the juice and i'll get to the meat of this document so this document was written for police officers that were transferred into the special demonstration squad all right still bill yet yeah, well this whole case is actually it's a massive collection of cases mate you had mark kennedy mark stone you had bob lambert you had so many of them more. So there's an organisation called Spy Cops. And you go and Google all that, you will find a treasure trove. There are so many. And there's women also. Um, but it seems to be a lot of men because it's obviously a male or orientated, at least back in the day, you know, male orientated organisations. So this Tradecraft Manual was written for officers coming into the SDS and Bob Lambert saying, by the way, this is going to be a totally different way of life. Welcoming to, and what that they joked, I forgot that, that what they called it now, but it was like, once you go into the SDS, you're never kind of, you're not seen for six years because you're so deep undercover. Um, so we'll read into his thing, his table of contents and his first, we'll get into it. We'll see from their head of, former head of the SDS himself, who actually, before I go on, these police officers are getting so deep in to monitoring protesters and activists that they're only human. And we have got to remember that 
it is essential to remember that they are only human and they was doing a job and there is part of that that you know you have it's so deep and that's how real and deep it gets that you do have to take that into account it's not just black and white it's not just simple headlines and stories on all sides these are real people's lives it's such a mad situation um right we'll get into his first so much redacted on these documents but um Sorry, it's just taking it a while to load up. I think that's because I'm streaming on YouTube. So we'll read his introduction from Bob Lambert himself. Uh, this manual of tradecraft for the Special Demonstration Squad is designed both for new members of the squad and also as a guide to best practice for members of the squad during the posting. The guide gives an insight into the differing techniques used to set up and live a false identity employees use to deal with situations which may arise. Current and former field operatives have identified areas of difficulties and some suggestions have been made as to effective solutions. However, the nature of the work is so varied that while it is important to highlight those practices which should be avoided at all costs, it is not possible to give comprehensive instructions on every problem. Each organisation of interest has its own particular problems which are dealt with in greater depth under the relevant group headings. But it, uh, like that's in brackets. But it must be remembered that each officer is a separate individual whose own character determines his or her proper approach to a specific issue. It's kind of going over me a little bit. This is at the moment. I don't know if it is for anyone else. Um, and bear with me if I don't react to comments straight away because I'm concentrating. Um, it must be admitted that our means of constructing false identities limits our choices and introduces a real danger of compromising our operation through using the same techniques. So it's interesting. So you get to find out, like, you know, imagine how edgy it is for them as well. You know, there's a lot of work from the activism side and understandably so. But imagine being one of these police officers and like living your life like undercover and that's mental. <laughs> um, are there for joining the live, Riley? Um, at, at first, it may seem a daunting prospect to enter the world of the wearies. I'll just stop there. So they called activists, protesters, wearies, or they did back in the day, called them wearies, people like me, <laughs> and, and stuff. Right. While new recruits will have been carefully scrutinised prior to, to, arri uh, to arrival on the squad, Nothing can prepare them for the reality of special demonstration squad work. The stresses and strains of living a lie during both your working and personal time and the unremitting unremit nature of that pressure throughout the posting creates a wholly unique lifestyle, both for operatives and dependents alike. However, before too long, the back office man will pick up the necessary operating skills needed to cope. So they've got, they, you know, you don't need to be no special posting for this. They're just picking people off and going, oh, we think you'll be all right for this. <laughs> Obviously. Um, once launched, the officer must survive on his or her wits until feeling entirely comfortable in the role. From time to time, problems will arise which will affect your duff or real life, the majority of which will be discussed below. On return to normal life after the posting, the difficulties become less immediate but different pressures of discovery and recognition remain both for the individual and the outfit as a whole so i'll just take it me things loading up slow because i'm doing all this on the tablet here one second I, i'm not going to touch the, i keep getting these invites and i've got to not touch them because it'll just connect me um the back office office duties <clears throat> On arrival at the office, the new recruit will be introduced to the mostly mundane duties expected of him or her. So the tea boy. Monday and Thursday are taken up with meetings of the field in office and the collection and dissemination of relevant files, reports and queries from one to the other. The searching of organisations and individuals, preparation and stamping of reports take up most of Tuesday and Friday. Leaving, this is a bit irrelevant, isn't it? But leaving Wednesday as the one day a week to catch up on outstanding matters and to concentrate on your false identity. Oh, they're just starting. They're just getting it all together. <laughs> um, he's written no, June 95. In Ju June 95. Uh, now in charge of somebody with blah, blah, blah. Now in charge of clerical duties. 
There should be more time available to spend research and planning and talking to past and present field officers about different aspects of the job. So they talk to the more experienced undercover officers a lot. The most useful part of the week to a new recruit revolves around meeting days. You should try and spend time with those officers already in the field. To Yeah, you're right still, Bill. Um, sorry if I'm slow re responding. Right. <laughs> pick up knowledge uh you should try to spend time with the, with those officers already in the field to pick up knowledge of the group you are targeted at and the more subtle behavior which field officers develop through time to survive a double life you will have a field officer assigned to you as a mentor and one should not be afraid to ask them any question you have no matter how sig insignificant it may seem <laughs> bro yapping again i'm yapping definitely yapping i'll keep yapping Give it, give it, keep, keep it coming, mate. Keep it coming. Right. Um, equally, one should not expect each officer to answer your query the same way. For different groups, expect different behaviour from their members. And even within the same group, officers will perform differently according to the personalities. That must mess their heads right up. Ain't it? I wonder, you know, I know what it's like living undercover as a runaway, living on the streets as a kid. Let alone, you know what I mean? <laughs> Telling another I was 18, isn't it? The field officers are unable to make direct queries of SB, oh, I don't know, what, A, oh, that'll be an organisation, ARNI, does anybody know what that, that means? Or other force indices, I don't know, sorry, it's written in old font and photocopied, as well as sources outside the MPD. It is most important that their requests for files, printouts, telephone checks, registry or local LIO checks are carried out promptly because a report on an individual may be awaiting just such confirmation. A particular bugbear is that files are often elsewhere when you request them. Try to keep on top of these requests and ask them at regular intervals. It'll be all different now. It was all paper back then, wasn't it? It's all going to be all on computer and that now. Equally important is the need to post diary sheets and other forms to each field officer when requested. You will soon know how irritating it is to attempt to complete your diary at a meeting without the notes you keep at home or find you have run out of form 287s or mileage sheets. Equally, ensure the Monday binder is always well stocked with forms or incur the wrath of the field. So it's just all the... All the why do people come in with all the like, daft... What is this for you? Why, why, why do they do it, man? They're <laughs> yapping again. Like, I wonder if he works for them. <laughs> Constructive use of downtime. The back office administration work is rarely fulfilling enough to interest one for five days a week. The quiet period should be used constructively in researching your future four years. I think some were actually undercover for much longer, for like six years. You should arrange days to travel to out areas outside London that will feature in your false life story. You should find time to contact field officers in your target group to check your proposed life story with him or her and to iron out any apparent inconsistencies. Uh, number 2.4, research into target group. So we're getting where they before they've come to infiltrate you, the, the stage where they're doing all the research. Um, there are two schools of thought in researching your target group prior to arrival on the scene. In one case, you enter the field as a political virgin and become educated by the group you have infiltrated, groups such as the Social Socialist Workers' Party, which they were infiltrating, accept this approach quite readily. The other possibility is to join your organisation with a level of sophisticated understanding of the interests of the group. The history of veganism in animal rights or an understanding of libertarian or anarchist views is an asset. So this is the whole thing. There was a, there was loads of hippie, so-called hippies, anarchists, and it would have been the same in the other scenes that they were monitoring. Obviously, football, the Irish stuff. It's deep, man. <clears throat> if you decide to arrive on the scene as a newcomer, you should still know what sort of approach will not be successful which there has been, there's been officers going to this and straight away be foiled because people aren't stupid, but, you know, and, and, and 
tough gig for these coppers doing it. Um, like, you know, you don't have to agree with somebody to give them a bit of credit, do you know what I mean? For like, whoa. Um, cheers for sharing the live, Marie. Appreciate that. Um, treating members of the group with flippancy or aggression is inappropriate, as is the use of racist, sexist, specialist or sizist language in the left-wing and libertarian circles. The prince, that's how you get foiled. The principle of finding the right attitude to approach the where the wearies works far better than an attempt to win them over by force or wit or charm alone. Whatever attitude you utilize, excuse me, must form part of your own makeup, for you will find it impossible to maintain an unnatural character trait for a long period. All very basic stuff, but worth mentioning. If you want to come into your field with some understanding of the issues, but without appearing to be a seasoned, knowledgeable individual, it is important not to show how much you know too quickly. If you are in a group that comes into conflict with the police on a regular basis, you should know some aspects of the law relating to public order and police procedures towards a detained person, but not all. And remember to get some facts spectacularly wrong so you can be corrected. As always, your contemporaries in the field will have ready access to the necessary documents you should read to become well informed. So they're just acting dumb. That's, that's how one of the tricks they're using. Tick that one off. Acting a bit like they don't know, but they do know. We all know that goes on. Right, preparation. This is uh, section three of his book, Preparation. Name. This is the interesting stuff, and they'll probably change the tactics from there. <clears throat> By tradition, the aspiring SDS officer's first major task on joining the back office was to spend hours and hours at St. Cathedral's house, uh, to where you, at uh, St. Catherine's house, sorry, that's where you, the birth registers and death registers, uh, leafing through death registers in search of a name he could call his own. On finding a suitable ex-person, usually a deceased child or young person with a fairly anonymous name, <clears throat> the circumstances of his or her untimely demise was investigated. <clears throat> If the death was nat if the death was natural or other oh I can't say that on here can I if it was natural or otherwise unspectacular and therefore unlikely to be findable in newspapers or other public records the SDS officers would apply for a cop for a copy of he meant the deceased person's birth certificate further research would follow to establish the respiratory status of the deceased person's family if any and if they were still breathing where they were living where they were living this is mad this is madness this is what they're doing in the name of surely even back then there was a more ethical way this is you know so there were it it was no it was that systemic that it was yeah totally still but it was that systemic that they got no problem in writing that in the trade craft manual i can't believe i've just read that art and it's crazy um if it if all was suitably obscure and there was little chance of the sds officer or more importantly one of the wearies running into the deceased person's parents siblings the sds officer would assume squatters rights over the unfortunate identity for the next four years so it makes you think about the language would assume squatters rights over the, do you know what I mean? They use the, there are, there are SDS squatters, and we know there is, and it's even been documented before, right? right. I wonder how many I've come across. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And I wonder how many actually I've come across and I've actually been friends with, like, on it, not like best buddies, but I wonder how many of these people have been sent to monitor. And actually, like, it's, you've, in a way, you like them because you've bonded with them. It's crazy. It's deep, in it? Um, all well and good, but we're all familiar with the story of an SDS officer being confronted with his own, uh, with his own, in brackets, death certificate. Yep. So if you don't already know, um, Helen Steele, her name was, um, <clears throat> she was 
with it was Helen Steele who was with the bloke who wrote this manual, Bob Lambert, and what was that sign? Um, so ha Helen Steele got suspicious. So these, what these officers do is they go off the board to say, I'm having a mental health breakdown. Um, I just need to get away. And so they go off abroad and, and sometimes women are left asking questions, thinking, why have they just disappeared? This doesn't add up, blah, blah, blah. In the case of Helen Steele, Helen went and, um, sorry, YouTube, if I'm not giving you any eyesight contact. But Helen Steele went and um, researched in St. Catherine's house the, 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 the records and found the name, I think, that Bob Lambert's real name. I can't remember. If anybody knows what it is on here, please write it. Um, it was Bob Robinson, was it? it might be, I think it was Bob Robinson, his fake name. Um, and she found all it all in the St. Catherine's house, and that's how he got rumbled. Obviously, with Mark Stone, I think they found his passport, the Mark Kennedy. Um, this news added to the growing unease among... Oh, wait, I'll, sorry, I'll scroll back. In 1994, it was reported that the Office of Population Censuses and Surveys, the agency responsible for maintaining the statutory registers of births, marriages and deaths, was in the process of computerisation. This news added to the growing unease among SDS managers regarding the risks inherent in adopting a provable false identity. That is to say, an identity with which hostile inquiry could expose as being that of a deceased person. A disclosure of this nature would present several threats, both to the SDS officers concerned and to the SDS operation as a whole. The use of a false identity would tend to indicate to a hostile inquirer that the SDS officer was more than a mere state informant, that he was in fact an undercover spy. A project was set in train to establish the extent of OP. CS computerization and what effect, if any, it would have on the SDS. It was considered that a computer system able to match the records of deaths and births quickly and easily, and which was accessible legitimately or otherwise to wearies or hostile inquirers, would make it necessary to change operating procedures without delay. It was hard for me to read that and process the information. Is it? Is it trans? Is it computing all right? Well, there's something I need to do to. Tell what uh, talk talk this better. Um, the SDS management research confirmed many earlier fears that the traditional manner in which field officers' identities were obtained was indeed unsafe. While the OPCS has developed and installed a computer system to record all births and deaths in England and Wales, there will be no back record conversation, and therefore there will be no immediate risk of an inquirer being able to confirm with a simple search that his comrade. Joe Bloggs is in fact deceased. However, it was discovered that there are frequent informal and uncontrollable discussions and referrals between a number of agencies and OPCS to establish whether identities are genuine. So that's one, isn't it? If you think something's going on in your life, I guess try and find someone with an agency who can go into that. I think you can pay to look at the births and deaths and things and go that deep into it, but so always try and find a person who can look into it for you to see, hang on, is this name, is this person real? Um, the Frederick Forsyth novel, The Day of the Jackal, explained how to acquire documents in the name of a deceased person, and the practice has proved popular among those who would defraud the benefit system or wish to travel abroad incognito. Funny how both sides are doing the same things. In it. Um... In the past, an identity with the birth certificate was deemed necessary in order to obtain the documentation and paraphernalia associated with everyday life. The birth certificate was used as an identity document, which is not, uh, which it is not, on which to, to base acquisition of accommodation, driving license, passport, bank account, etc. All official documents. That's how deep we're getting. Once they've got one document, they're set up for life, like anybody coming in with any fake document, you know, under somebody you think is blah, blah, blah. There's a lot redacted out from here, so I'm going to skip down because so much... I'm just going to read these little chunks, but they're only little tiny chunks. Um, having said that, 
uh, hang on, there's whatever was redacted. Um, if matters have come so bad that you're unwary, that your wearies are interrogating you about your identity, something has gone seriously wrong. So much so that no amount of carefully constructed cover will rescue your operation. The object of building good, good cover is to enable you to go about your business with confidence, to reinforce the subconscious impression your field alter ego will make on your wearies, and to buy you time you need to dispel suspicion. A bit more redacted, bloody hell, old page here, redacted, hang on. Um, I'm just trying to read so much, so I'm not just telling you little tiny chunks of... Uh, there are two ways you can come up with your false name, they say. You can have a completely false identity made up for you or obtain details of a deceased child from St. Catherine's house. Um, each case has its merits and problems. In both cases, avoid using the same identity as a former field officer. Um, in the first case, one should start by searching the, the death records, noting folio references or of potential candidates. I don't even know what folio means. Can someone tell me. <laughs> Avoid infant deaths or people aged over 16 since the first are easy to spot. And the second will have records in DSS, which could be checked by the wearies. So if you're suspicious of someone, check out their age. That's good. That is a. You should obtain as as many potential names as possible to allow you to choose the most relevant. It is possible to look for a person who is your same age, but it may suit you to try someone a little younger. After all, someone in their late twenties is unlikely to be a new recruit to radical political activism. I guess they give us all sorts, don't they? I guess it's not just one. Um, a little bit of redaction here, but some long paragraphs. So I'll just skip to the end of the paragraph after the big redacted chunk. Um, having chosen a surname or group of surnames, then search each one in turn for a series of death registers until you find records of death of males of the right age who died between the ages of 8 to 14. It is obvious to people who work at St. Catherine's that there is something odd about someone who spends all their day poring over death registers, going through them page by page and making very occasional notes. It's different now. Obviously, you can hide behind your computer now, do it in your bedroom. No one's watching you going, who's that? Maybe your website, people can have got a log, but... Mm. Um, it is better to appear as someone tracing his family tree, but being uncertain as to first names of the family members since your behaviour will then be entirely consistent with such a story. Remember that. Oh, I'm looking for blah, 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 but I'm not quite sure. And obviously there's a common story, a legitimate reason people think that, but remember this. Because if it all starts adding up. <clears throat> Once you find a relevant death, work out the approximate age and check back through the birth records until you find a match. Since June 1969, the death records give the precise date of birth. Just to make sure, send both the death and birth details to be searched by staff at CO. Don't know what CO means. If anyone does, let me know. Um, one should re also remember that a birth certificate may well give the current address of the parents of the child. So make sure your particular choice has no current link with the present inhabitants of the properties shown on the certificate. So again, if you've got questions to ask, that is one, isn't it? That just to check it off the list. Ah, oh, did you did where did, did did your parents move then? Did they? Did they? Did they? Where did where did they move? They didn't stay. So where did they move then? And you got to do your research. Remember that one. And there is. I have put this on YouTube. If you want to go back, if you need to take any kind of notes and come back to all this, um, find me Ben Westwood UK or Ben Westwood on YouTube and currently live. So it will be on the live tabs. And, yeah, we're live on TikTok. I know if anyone's watching on YouTube, I can't see the screen right now, but probably to myself. But <laughs> It is conceivable that a hostile inquiry into the details you've given may result in you being presented with your own death certificate. And this has happened to a former colleague. One can avoid the problem to some extent by using the birth details of an adopted person who died as a child and who would assume the adoptive parent's identity prior to death. Another possibility is to find... The birth details of a child with no father's details on the certificate. 
and then using a different surname which could relate to a stepfather. The difficulty is in finding such a certificate. It's probably only possible through luck or personal knowledge of someone from your own past. That's interesting, man. To me. Right. Getting all paranoid now. Oh. <laughs> the major bonus of being the driver is a clear opportunity to avoid arrest. The driver is always needed. Uh, uh, sorry, I'll just let you know I'm reading past another block of redacted information. So whatever paragraph 331 was, um, I'm halfway through this paragraph. The major bonus of being the driver is a clear opportunity to avoid arrest. The driver is always needed to get people home after a demo or action, and there is no shame in keeping away from trouble for that reason. Just in slightly in the background, watching, telling you to do it, so you do it, and I'll drive you back. Right. And I just want to say, before I carry on, I am aware that not only with any all kinds of different people from the general public see this video but also there will be police officers at some point see this probably on youtube or whatever um and from a balanced view from a balanced balanced view you know there are a lot of things going out there that are getting out of hand you can understand sometimes what people have got their eyes on something but it's got way out of hand and i think there are a lot a lot of people um being used for all kinds of things and it's gone messy and it's gone mad and it's not what it says on the tin um and a lot of people have got a lot of questions to ask. But anyway, so, yeah, just want to say it. But, but what my point is, is if you are like a police officer or anybody watching this or anything like that, please bear in mind that I'm trying to keep it real, balanced, but also speak for people that need to, need to that have been, that, that the mental health effects are on both sides of the board for both those that are monitored and those doing the monitoring. We've got to accept that. It's, um, and talk about it, you know, anyway. The major bonus of being the driver is clear. Oh, I've said that. Always remember that you should fit your driving history around this license. Don't talk about burning up the M1 on a Honda Goldwing unless you have a motorcycle pass on your license. And don't mention your participation in the RAC rally in 1984 when the license says you passed your test in 1986. I bet they slip up all the time. You've got a clock, keep your eye on it. Hang on. And then people say, oh, he's he probably just a blagger. That's probably what happens. Like, you think, why is he, why is he lying all the time? And the fact, but half the time, people don't even think the coppers lie. So we've got a lot of redaction on this one, whatever this is. This is, I think, probably this is where Lambert is talking about his personal life a lot. Because it does say something about personal history. It says, these redacted paragraphs address specific details about the cover identities of undercover officers. Which, again, looking at things real. So for those involved who have been, who may have been monitored or suspect they've been monitored or whatever, um, we also have to understand that maybe these police officers have also done mad operations. And if they did ever get revealed, you know, they probably have took a few bad guys down. Let's not forget that. Let's not forget that, you know. And... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, God, I'm off and on and all this about revealing all the identities. I think those who've been affected 100% need to know the identities, need to sign a waiver, even if they need to say, look, under the security, the, 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 the you know, the security and safety of these former undercover officers that maybe, you know, keep it on the lowdown. But, um, yeah, it would be mad if they if, if all these names just got public. That's why I'm off and on about it, even though I'm interested in this issue. I don't think I would feel comfortable with all these names becoming public because they probably have also not only monitored activists and all that, but they have probably also been part of operations where if it got known, their identities got known. If you know what goes on, you know what goes on. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, the police aren't all always all powerful force and things like that so anyway let's let's um i'm gonna read another paragraph and calm down for a minute have a little break for one minute 
Quote, once you've been armed with an easy to remember personal history, you may never use it. It is highly unlikely that within a very short time as a field officer, you will face hostile questioning in such depth. Nevertheless, an intensely secretive individual who never gives anything of his or her past is not normal and could easily be treated with suspicion. Equally, a person who is too free with personal details is equally suspicious. I bet they all think I'm one. <laughs> I'm just like throwing it out there, mate. Right. What should happen in that little... What should happen is that little facts about yourself will be revealed slowly to your circle of activists and over time a mutual trust will be built up. In most of the groups we cover, there is a high level of paranoia and suspicion because of this. Um, so you will eventually have to flesh out the bones of your life. For example, after four years in the field, approximately 50% of my wares knew me only as Andy Van because my first name and employment as a van driver were the only details they needed. Others knew my surname, but none knew the name or home address of the fictionist uncle I used as an excuse to get away from the occasional weekend demonstrations. A few celebrated my duff birthday with me. That is just, I can't believe that. I know they've got to have a duff birthday, but man... You're there thinking, yeah, the geezer says his birthday. Happy birthday, mate. Man, how, like, betrayed do you feel after that? Knowing that it wasn't even his birthday, man. Mental. Um, a few celebrated my duff birthday with me, but only one or two knew I was the father of a something child from a failed relationship. Be assured that your wearies will be talking about you when you first get involved and you must always aim for consistency in your life history. I totally noticed that when I lived in Brighton. There's a place in Brighton. Um, well, everybody knows it's called the Cowley Club. The old Bill knows exactly what it is called, the Cowley Club. It's like a bookshop, socialist bookshop place that I ended up going to when I was homeless in Brighton. And, uh, oh, man, you, there's a newcomer from no one knows your face. Who is he? Probably check me out a little bit and say, no, I was just did a bit of YouTube. Is all right? You could feel it, you know. I was even invited to, like, meetings. Of, I didn't want to be there half the time because of that paranoia, the clickiness and all the talk of undercovers that have come in and things like that because they was all experienced activists and I was just a floater who kept ending up with protesters and activists. And I was never really set myself out to do things like that. I just was a young homeless lad that... Always did have a lean in for peace and love and stop the war and fairness and justice, but um, I kind of fell into a lot of it all, really. I think a lot of us do. I don't know why I said that. Right. Former employment. So much redacted here for some reason. As long as you know enough about the job to talk about it in a plausible manner, such information should be used. If you allude to a particular skill, such as plumbing, carpentry, Blah blah blah. Be prepared to be asked to repair a washing machine or rehang a stitching uh, sticking door, and make sure you have tools and knowledge to do the job. But why you ask them? Why you ask them? Just take notice. See if they didn't right. Get your carpenter mate to pretend he doesn't know what he's doing and watch. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So just, what, what do you reckon, mate? <laughs> and, uh, right. While you are researching your former employment, it is important to give some thought to your employment while out in the field. Redacted sentence for some reason. Discuss your thoughts with the office in the field. Deciding on a proper form of employment while in the field will be covered below. Right. Appearance. I'm looking forward to this one because this is where it's like. I'll tell you something. Right. So I come from, I come from Warsaw. And it's not exactly... Made in Essex or Chelsea, Warsaw, right? <laughs> but I've heard still, you know, people are constantly, and we see it, don't we, on Facebook, people are constantly getting shocked by, what, they're undercover? No way, man. But we are. Um, appearance. I'm looking forward to this. This is where it tells you how it is. The, the major reason why it takes at least three months or longer to graduate from the back office to the field is the time it takes for your appearance to change. One should not forget that a tour lasts approximately four years and after that experience you will have to return to a normal life. You must make every effort to ensure that on return 
the likelihood that your former comrades will recognise you is reduced to a minimum. The best way of achieving this is to change your appearance radically. For men, the addition of a beard and glasses to a normally clean-shaven face, an earring and radically different haircut will make the probability of recognition at a later date almost nil. We're getting James Bond now. <laughs> um, for women, a change in hair colour and hairstyle is essential. You should try to wear clothes which are similar in style to each other but different from your normal garb. For example, always wear bold check shirts and jeans, big sloppy jumpers, a distinctive coat or hat or whatever least resembles your own tastes. If you are going to wear laundered and iron clothes, make sure you have an iron and ironing board in the duff and a washing machine there or in a nearby laundry. Being a little untidy, smelly and rumpled is a natural state for many of the people in our target groups. They, I've noticed, I, I'll stop there a sec because I have glanced at little parts of what I think is this document. And there was so much of this by Bob Lambert saying they're all smelly, they never wash. The attitude was absolutely disgusting. And my experience, I don't know what it was like back then, but my experience of being around people who attended demonstrations and things like that, it wasn't, like, I didn't get that. I know MF907, have you not got anything wholesome and substance? you got anything with any calories? Have you got anything there with any calories, mate? Any calories, or is that just some like empty 20p energy drink nonsense that you're talking? You're talking empty calories, dude. Give it a you give it a rest anyway. Right. Um you must make every effort to ensure that on return the likelihood that your former comrades will recognise you is reduced to a minimum. The best way of achieving this is to change your appearance radically. I've read this, haven't I, before? Old dunce name started. Yep, yep, yep. That's all I'm hearing. Well, go and there's plenty more TikToks, mate. Plenty more TikToks. And you know what? I'm going to carry on reading because there's people interested in what I'm saying and I'm not going to let you steal the show. So do one, kid out. Right. Um, being a little untidy, smelly and rumpled is a natural state for many of the people in our target groups. Close associates may discern the smell of fresh clothing from the suburban washing line, even as distinct from the less fresh smell of lawn drip washing. So if you are wearing the former, but per, per, per ting, you know what I mean, to be wearing the latter, per, per, just say portraying, potential for suspicion. Um... Right, number four, launch. I'm going to have a break for two seconds. I hope you don't mind. I'm just, um, it's a lot of waffling. There's a lot of waffling. I am yapping a bit, but we'll, we'll not, you know. I'm just going to have a minute just to um, feed the beast. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Um, now, thanks. It's nice to have people here watching. It's I, I, so often I'm doing lives and I'm talking to myself. I said that earlier on the video I was doing, so nice one. I shouldn't really stop, but I guess I'm not a robot, so just give me a second here. I think if I put a filter on for a couple of seconds, it should be all right doing this. What I'm about to do. I'm just going to put Gingerbread Man on for just a moment, all right? We've got Gingerbread Man. is the, anti, the anti-violation Gingerbread Man. I'm not going to be having a break for long. I'm just looking forward to... So this bit's all about when he's coming and moving into the homes and stuff. They're actually going undercover now. I'm trying to find my street fighter. Okay. Fill your boots, bro. Cheers, mate. One second. Yeah, oh, actually, I can I can waffle on as gingerbread man, can't I? I've just realised that. I can waffle on as gingerbread man. I'll carry on. Address. 
On leaving the cocoon of the back office, the first important step to take is to find suitable accommodation. Can you take this seriously as gingerbread man? Or should I just stop for a second? Because I feel like I can't... I just can't read this seriously as gingerbread man. Um, two seconds, man. It's like... It is a bit weird, isn't it? It's like... Going to tell someone they've lost the job and wearing a clown outfit while you're doing it or something. <laughs> Can you come into the office? We're having work. We, it's really important, serious, and then they're telling you you're fired and they're all blowing party papers and giving you a cake. <laughs> right, let's carry on. Let's carry on. Right, let's get off gingerbread, man. One second. I'm trying to cancel gingerbread, man, here. It's not letting me. One second. X. This is not good. <laughs> yeah, I can see why. It's quite nice and anonymous, really, but... Oh, no, I've totally pressed some here. Effects. Are we off? Can we... Cancel off gingerbread. Ah, that's what I was doing. That's why. Here we go. Back to my green screen. It's literally not letting me. Oh, this is... Hang on. It's not letting me, you know. Oh, I'm gone. Oh. Yep, I'm gone. One second. I'm so sorry about this, folks. Um, effects. Enhance. Effects. What I'm trying to do is just press off, cancel, no effects. Let's, I'm going to have to go to my green screen then anyway. Um, I can't believe this. Right, we're stuck on Gingerbread Man for some reason. I have no clue why we're stuck on Gingerbread Man. Please try and not... I hope it doesn't ruin the seriousness of anything. No, we are stuck with gingerbread man. Totally, for some reason. Right, okay, we're stuck with gingerbread man, whatever. Sorry, okay. Right. Um, That is wound me up, that ass. We'll carry on. I say we'll carry on. It's fate. You know what, still, Bill? I think it is, mate. It must be. Oh, I've, have I just locked my own live there? I'm just going to try once more. Can't believe this. Right. Green screen. I've got a feeling this is going to work. Oh, we're on. Are we on? One second. It's not letting me click X now. No, I thought we was on for a second then. I saw my face appearing. No, it's fate. We're stuck with ginger. Oh, we're stuck with gingerbread man. Right, we're stuck with gingerbread man. Address. On leaving the cocoon of the back office, the first important step. Just while I say that, yeah, we've had. Oh, I think we might have even had a. No, we've had no likes on YouTube. Let's see what. See what. How good we are on YouTube. Nothing. Nada. As all well. right. So thank you, TikTokers. Um. Your new lifestyle is your Duff identity and your Duff earnings determine the nature of the property you should be looking for. Some officers will have made tenuous contacts with organisations before venturing out into London's bedsit land. Um, sorry if I can't see your comments. There we go. Um, you can either approach a state or letting agents for potential homes, go through local papers, <laughs> Go through local papers and shop window advertisements or use all of these techniques to find a suitable bed, bedroom or studio flat. The office has a budget for your accommodation that currently stands between 60 to £100 pounds a week. That was back in the night. I think this was the 90s. Depending on your Duff lifestyle, for most of us, it would be sensible to look for properties at the lower end of the range. And the only way to do that is to compare prices by viewing properties. One should hope to have one's own cooking and washing facilities, but the best you can find will normally have a shared bedroom and toilet with your own fridge and baby bell and cooker in the room. 
The fact that a room is in disgusting decorative order is no reason to turn it down. However, you should avoid flats. Telef uh, and then big redactions here for some reason. Um, however, you should uh, telephone. Something about the telephone ties you down to being in the premises. From those, uh, okay, having a telephone line ties you down to being in the premises unless you have to answer phone. You can interrogate at another address with shared telephone. I can't read this. So sorry. Um, or a shared telephone with notoriously unreliable housemates who never take messages. That was hard to read, so hard to read when loads of it's redacted. Um, once you have found the ideal premises, you will need to convince the accommodation bureau or private landlord that you are a suitable tenant. Uh, and, and there's questions. Can you pay the rent now and in the future? What sort of job do you do? Are you likely to be claiming housing benefit in the future? Do you have any appealing, appalling habits? Do you keep pets? Any references? Can you afford the bed seat? Blah, blah, blah. Right, and then just one more boring sentence on that. <laughs> As suitable premises is becoming harder and harder to find, it is best to accept any premises that appear to fit most of your requirements. And if it turns out to be unsuitable, you can go out and find a better place at leisure. So the next section on four is setting up a credible duff. So it goes into how they're um, doing their cover stories. But I am just going to try once more to get off Gingerbread Man, so I've got that little screen thing I had up there right so if I click that click that there can you do it I'll see if I can upload that now we are totally stuck on gingerbread man that is mental someone's someone's comments been filtered but I don't know what they were meant to say. So sorry if that was a good comment or not. Anyway, setting up a credible duff. Once you know who you are, what your employment is and what sort of politics you enjoy, you should combine all facets of your new life so that they represent a convincing whole. Uh, and there's like a whole page redacted after that. You could begin tentative steps towards political activism by joining mainstream press groups who are concerned with a particular issue. Your new, your new identity will have an interest in, be it Greenpeace, people for the ethical treatment of animals, shelter. RK, fathers against the child support agency, searchlight and so on. Okay, yeah. So they will all, so remember this. Because it's so easy to think somebody's so cool because they're into all the same causes as you, but they know straight that their identity and their cover is so well done that they will have all this already in place. And you'll just think, no way, man. They will provide you with information on current causes you can use as a key to join a more radical political group in and prime your other residents that you have an interest in political causes. Little bit more reductions until we get to section four three, familiarising with local locality. So for me, this is interesting because like if you do suspect anybody isn't quite who they say they are, this is all the question. This is all questions you need to like ask them that and things you need to suss. Now you have settled into your new home, you should get to know the surrounding area well. If you're going to be paying council tax, it is useful to join the local library. Not only will you be able to borrow books to read, the reference library will be able to provide you with information on local activities and access to the local community groups you may wish to get involved in and which give your new persona the appearance of authentic life. Membership of a local environmental group or sanctuary will assist you in the environmental or animal rights area to develop a local history of appropriate activism in your field but groups such as a local writing club, rock climbing club, music society and so on will again help you to keep a distance from your wearies when you need to. So they've all, you know, just that excuse for going off and it, oh, I've got blah, blah, blah today. I can't be. Um, always be guided by what you feel is necessary and by advice from your contemporaries in the specific field you intend to penetrate. So while I've just been reading that, it's really, really made me think Imagine that you know someone, right, and you don't like, whether you suspect them or not, and they're undercover monitoring a certain group or whatever. So when they go into these, like, setting themselves up with these lives, 
having memberships in all these little groups that you think oh, they're just nothing. That's just someone's little lobby. You know, imagine like when you they bring a friend along from one of them clubs and like you know you don't really you're just blind to it and they're saying oh by the way this is my mate Bill from the chess club and even Bill from the chess club might not know what's going on everybody's been drooped and groomed often in this situation and obviously for sometimes in the name of national security these you know we've got to admit some there are instances. In, that are happening in our country when these things do to happen, but there are a lot of times when it's been misused and abused, and people, uh, you know, we have to also we have to we have to remember the mental health effects of protesters and people who grow up with this stuff going on around and questioning who they fought with their friends, etc., even partners. Right. Um, yeah, big ups. I'm going to say what the old TikTokers say. If you are watching and you're enjoying this, please do give us a little tap. I'm starting to say it now. I'm starting to get the TikTok virus and say, give us a little tap. But it does help, folks, and all that. Um, thanks, man. Um, anyway, where are we? Right, visiting the local entertainment. Be it a pub, cinema, swimming pool, or ice skating rink, or whatever else you feel is a necessary part of becoming a real person in your new home. Know where the tube station is and the times of the last train, the location of the nearest bus stop and where the buses go to. Become a regular customer at a local paper shop and buy a daily and local paper. Even order a specific magazine from them. Use the local post office, bank or building society, shops and supermarket and the local takeaways where their fare doesn't contradict any dietary scruples your character may have. Yeah, so... Yeah, like otherwise you'd see, look, why are you shopping here? That doesn't fit with you, mate. What, you're going to the meat market when you're supposed to be like a vegetarian, right? <laughs> when your trolls around the neighborhood, with your trolls around the neighborhood, you will soon find out where the local political groups meet, or you will bump into the ambiguous street stall. It is useful to take an interest in these groups if they are not your target organization, since you have an opportunity to experience living a lie with street activists who are unlikely to feature. Once you join your own grouping. When dealing with groups, you use such techniques as an opportunity to recruit. Avoid giving them your duff address since they may come contact visiting. Even better, practice can be obtained through local community organisations such as a local conservation group where you can rehearse your new life in a relatively safe territory. That's well interesting for me, like just understanding their it's a whole new thing, isn't it? Looking at their side of it. Right. Although such preparations may appear overcautious, you're the only person who can judge whether your new life appears real. Any opportunities to use your new name, date of birth and signature should be grabbed until becoming someone else feels totally natural. Man, how many people do these undercover officers dupe in the name of security? Who are they practicing on? Me? Were they? Were they? Sometimes I wonder this, you know, and I'm serious, you know, otherwise I wouldn't be doing this research. Um, they practice. They're not just wafflers, Walter Mitty's. Remember this, man. You know, they're doing this to people who've done nothing wrong half the time. Something's going on with my phone. It's, it's the old verify things going on. Unable to verify. One second. It's the jigsaw pieces. Come on. Oh, here we go. I think this is going to do me in one second. Now, here we go. Verification complete. I better press like or do me. Can I add other comments? Here we go. Then should. Oh, God. What? Well, I should not get stuck now. Anyway. Um, never relax when you are in your alter ego, even if the circumstances are not threatening. Practice makes perfect. This is opening my eyes. Vehicle. The type of vehicle you purchase is dependent on the field you are covering, whether the vehicle is your own or belongs to your employer, how roadworthy your choice of vehicle appears to be, and finally, personal taste. Groups who travel distances to pursue their political agendas will become a, will become a driver who owns a vehicle with open arms, while others may find such apparent wealth suspicious. Did that, did that make sense to me? 
Vehicles have ranged from old bangers to top of the range sales rep models, minis to transit vans. It is important to maintain variety in the field vehicles because in the unlikely event in operation being exposed, others in the same or different fields will not have so similar a link in their own lives. Okay. Hopefully you lot understood that one better than I did. <clears throat> vehicles can be purchased from dealers or privately and then that's all redacted. You would normally pay cash for the vehicle. Uh, once the vehicle is in your possession, it is a good idea to make it look like a work vehicle or your own vehicle. And then just a massive paragraph of redactions. Um, 4.4.4. It may be necessary to change your vehicle during your tour. And reduction. Uh, you must have a really good reason for wanting to change your transport. The most common problem, excluding total write-offs, is where your vehicle comes to the notice of people or in... Uh, notice of police or in the case of the fascist anti-fascist groups fascist or anti-fascist groups where your vehicle becomes a target of the opposing groups tender ministrations and then we've got a whole page uh, of redactions and we've got number 5.43 uh, another important consideration is where your work places in relation to your duff and real home um, an employer working in the midst of your bandit country may well get fed up with the occasional visits by your wearies or their telephone calls. If the workplace is, con is convenient for them, be assured that they will come around. It is better to have an employer between your duff and home so that anyone seeing you driving between the two will assume you are heading to or from work. Interesting detail to counter into this if you ever get your suspicions where that's located just in case again it all fits you know uh we've got a, a redacted sentence on the next paragraph and then followed by it is important that you actually perform the work you're supposed to be doing while there is no need to put in a 40 hour week you should give your employer support when asked and you should volunteer to work when your political life is in a quiet phase that is deep undercover that is so deep undercover isn't it um if you are intent on being self-employed, you should know how to do your own books and know how to organise your PAYE and national insurance. If a wary is self-employed, you can bet he or she will discuss such things unless you are anti-establishment anarcho who works in the black economy, where such issues are of no concern. Um, if you decide to be unemployed or have a period of unemployment during your tour, you should be familiar with DSS forms and methods of claiming. And then loads of redactions. And we've got this next section called First Contact. Um, let me just have a sip. My coffee's gone well cold now. I don't know that. Oh, it has. That's horrible. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, imagine you are set up in your false identity. You have wheels, a home, and a job. <clears throat> you are a regular fixture at the local and help mow the grass in the local community centre playground. Now is the time to move on to your real purpose in life. Infiltrate the wearies. Man, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> your first contact is dependent on how active your target group are at the time you were launched. Yeah, whatever, mate. Your success is also dependent on your approach. There are two methods of entry. In one scenario, you enter the field unsullied by political extremism and become educated by the group you have infiltrated the other possibility is to join your organization with a level of political sophistication or understanding in an emotional level and become drawn into more extremist views entering a london-based group and alleging a history of extremist activism is another part of the, in another part of the country is not generally recommended on most occasions you will be caught out, but on one occasion I know of, such an approach has paid dividends. This approach will probably only work in the animal rights, environmental, pacifist, anarcho fields and require sound knowledge of the group's politics, history, battle stories and methods of, group direct, uh, methods of direct action. One technique that works well in organised left-wing groups such as the Socialist Workers' Party is to represent yourself as a natural labour supporter. Not a Labour Party member, as that could be checked. 
disillusioned by the centrist direction of the new Labour and searching for a true socialist alternative to the Tories. So all this has been going on since way before even we were born. Everything we're seeing today, the same narrative, it's the same thing. Eh? Um, in such a case, you should have a sound knowledge of socialist principles and have mastered politically correct language. The first meeting with such groups will normally be through paper sales, either in your, which would probably be different now a little bit, I should imagine, um, either in your locality or on a march somewhere. <clears throat> Do I, one second, one second, can I, how do I, see you mate, mute his account, there we go, later, uh, <laughs> it's got to be done in it, right, um, buying a paper from a seller and chatting for a short time after purchasing a paper will soon generate a recruiting effort from the target. After you have picked their interest, it is best to play hard to get and slowly interrogate into the local branch. The best means of entry to almost any field is on the back of a national or London-wide campaign, enjoying the active support of many extremist organisations or large numbers of your target organisation together will support. You went on Bob Lambert writing this, sorry, from the general public. I think Bob Lambert needed a bit of, what's it, proof... <laughs> Good examples of such events are the News International Dispute, poll tax protests, <clears throat> opposition to the Gulf War, the N M are oh, the No M Eleven Link campaign, protests against the Criminal Justice Act, council by elections involving a fascist candidate, and demonstrations opposing the export of veil calves. The sudden meeting of minds between the public and extremist groups over a current issue gives the relevant organisation's members the best opportunity to obtain access to new recruits. And you could come to the notice as a stalwart campaigner very quickly. The camaraderie which develops at large demonstrations between the protesters <laughs> makes the job of infiltration very much easier. Have we got the same person just coming to the room? I don't know. Maybe not. Hello, if not. Um... Another similar method of entry revolves around large anniversary demonstrations or events such as week-long day schools. <laughs> I've got my own dedicated troll, by the way. So we've just like it's getting interesting when somebody literally signs in from a different account to troll you. Oh, I'll leave them to it. I hope you're well down, mate. I'll give you a little head rub. Have a good one, kiddo. Right. <laughs> right. Um each extremist group has some form of regular event which allows entry to their circles. The events can be annual marches such as World Day for Laboratory Animals, the National Anti-Hunt Campaign March Against Blood Sports, Hiroshima Day, World Day Against McDonald's, Labour Day Marches or Bloody Sunday, or events such as Marxism and Anarchy in the UK, or 10 Days That Shook the World, or Living Without Cruelty. These events facilitate contact with local campaign groups and enable you to get on a mailing list and get invited to meetings. When the extremist diary is empty and there are no current campaigns to get drawn into, infiltration becomes much more of a gradual process. When the political scene is quiet, there is no easy catalyst to facilitate your acceptance of the target group's more radical beliefs. <clears throat> a good technique to use in these circumstances is to refer to a particularly unpleasant event in your life, which has forced you into getting off your bum and into action. These events could be the sudden loss of a job, intimidating by, intimidation by the state, such as appalling experience at the hands of the police or DSS investigators or seeing a man beating a dog and feeling so much anger you are driven to support direct action for animals. Each circumstance should be carefully researched to fit in with your new life history and checked with current operatives in your field to see if such a response would, response would be accepted by the wearers. Mad one. Maintaining cover is the next section. Living on your wits. I'm just going to uh, just going to feed the beast a little. If you want to help feed the beast, this is. Do you know what? I'm wondering if that's why I can't change my screen. Um, you know, because I did have a PayPal link on there, and I kind of think you know, there's no seventy percent going to um, anybody with this. So, 
I wonder if that's why climate change is bad. I don't know. Get power. Anyway, living on your wits. I will. If you do want to support, like support, feel free to send us a rose. I'm not going to say send the roses all the time, folks. Um, I am one of the last supportive people on here you'll ever see. <laughs> but that's just how it goes. I've got PayPal and all that. PayPal.com forward slash Ben Westwood UK. PayPal.me forward slash Ben Westwood UK. That's it. But anyway, I won't yap on too much. Living on your wits. Now you have become a member or supporter of your target organisation. You are on your own. You will be living on your wits with very little technical support or backup. Or they do, it probably mentions having a handler somewhere. Under normal conditions, the officer will need to keep in contact with you. And then the rest of that is redacted. And to the next point is paranoia. Oh, I'm looking forward to this bit because like to understand inside their head while they're in this. That's what I mean. Everybody's paranoid, the people monitoring. And the people being monitored. As your involvement in a group becomes more serious, it is inev inevitable that you experience paranoia. Any fears you may have that your group is talking about you behind your back are well-founded, since all groups discuss new members and their potential to the cause in the future. Part of that conversation will certainly include musings as to whether you are an MI5 infiltrator, undercover policeman or paid grass. Usually you will not become aware of their interest in you until you are a fixture when you will participate in similar character assassination of newer recruits. When you first make contact with your group, you should treat your return to your normal life from that of the wearies with extreme paranoia until you feel confident. Just because you see the name, uh, just because you see the same car in your rear view mirror as you leave your duff and as you head out onto the main road to, I can't read that word, to something you're wary, way home, does not mean you are being followed, but you should treat it as suspicious until you know different, especially in London when cars are... What's that still, Bill? You've had what, mate? I have was trying to read that, so there's so much going on. I'm not, get, I'm not grasping exactly what you're saying there, mate, just because so much in that one paragraph. Um... Right, what you've been accused of being, are you saying you've been accused of being one or? I've been accused of being coppers when I've walked through London and been trying to find certain medicinals. <laughs> right, um, just because you see the same kind that, yeah, it does not. The wearies are generally not sophisticated in their cat, their intelligence capability. Well, I would not say that's necessarily true. There are people. That was the naivety coming out of Bob Lambert then. I think underestimating. All right, Team Blue, how you doing there, mate? Yeah, um, what do you reckon? Was it a uh, special branch still, Bill? Or counterintelligence? So this unit, so uh, this unit later was known as the National Public Order Intelligence Unit. I think they focus over the whole country, I think. There was officers. So there was officers like Mark Stone, Mark Kennedy, same person, who was, um, for some reason, just going off to Belgium and Germany and places. Nah, I don't know who Octavia Westwood is. She's got a lovely name, though. <laughs> She's got a lovely name. I don't, I don't know her, unfortunately. Anyway, let's carry on. Um, I am reading the comments if, if it takes me a second to reply Okay, a work in life above pay it is important to look the part if you are a labourer get dirty and appear at the occasional meeting your soap Jacob um, in your grubby work clothes if you are a mechanic make sure your hands are covered in spent oil and your fingernails retain oily grime they're doing Jacob there. Right? Um, the telephone. British Telecom have become the worst enemy of undercover operations. Now they have introduced automatic call tracing and callback services. You cannot hope to survive if you say you are ringing from a phone in Lambeth. 
only to have the number traced to a pen's exchange. Whilst most public telephone boxes are not connected to the system and while Mercury has not updated their systems, this is old information, um, you can afford to use them. Soon, however, these two loopholes will have been closed. You will soon be forced to drive to an appropriate telephone box nearer your, to your workplace or Duff home. Well, they've just got mobiles now, haven't they? Or else have a good reason to be in an unusual part of the capital. Alternatively, use a mobile telephone and swallow the cost of such calls. You can dial 141 before ringing a wary from home to ensure they have no access to a callback service. But make sure you tell them you're ringing from a telephone box in case they ring back. In many circumstances, however, it is unsafe to use your home telephone. Yeah, but there's a hole in Lambert's thing already from... I'm not trying to... <laughs> but no, it's something some people spot, isn't it? You know, it's like, well, why is your number withheld? That's the first thing I'd think is, why is your number withheld if you ring him from the phone box, mate? Because whenever I've been rung from a phone box, it's never been withheld. That's not customary standard as far as I know. So remember that. When a target has come to the attention of the unit, it is doubly important to ensure you follow the above advice since your call could become part of an evidential trial given to evidence. And it's got big letters under no circumstances you should you ring from your home address right okay next next section is alcohol and d-r-u-g-s in the past alcohol was sometimes a regular lubricant of sds operations nowadays i bet it was nowadays it is simply inappropriate to drink and drive You'll be prosecuted and face a driving ban and you may well face disciplinary proceedings. Some groups we infiltrate drink heavily and you will have to participate to a greater or lesser extent. When you drink, don't drive, stay in your duff and wait until morning. DRUGS are in widespread use throughout the alternative scene. You should come to a decision as to whether you use or abstain. There will be less pressure on you if you are a non-smoker and a SPLIFF is passed round, but you should be familiar with drug culture in any case. The largest is use is of cannabis and derivatives, followed by ecstasy and speed. Hard addictive DRUGS are around, but generally avoided by the wearies on the groups of cost. Aids and basic knowledge of the damage caused by physical addiction. Uh, caused by physical addiction. What's this? Bro is in the U40s indoor yapping champion. Go on, mate. Yeah, cheers. Champion. All right. Again, if you have to imbibe soft stuff or become stoned through secondary smoking, don't attempt to drive home. Go to the duff and sleep it off. Fair enough. At least I've got some morals there, the undercovers. I'd just like to say a big hello to my personal troll we've got in here. We've got a personal, I feel privileged. Thanks, Epster. Right. A common fear is that using alcohol or DRUGS will loosen your tongue and you will give the game away. I can only say that I have been in many states of intoxication during my tour and have never had a problem with basic security. Wow, so Bob Lambert was always off his head. <laughs> he's off his head all the time old Lambert boy <laughs> right if you don't feel confident stay on the side of caution and avoid intoxicants as much as possible the sober driver and the straight edged activists uh, who never get stoned are far more common in alternative society than one's first impressions indicate right um, sexual liaisons, this is the big controversy around all this. So, five, six sexual liaisons. So, this is what opened the whole floodgates up for this whole review, isn't it? Um, the thorny issue of romantic entanglements during a tour is the cause of much soul searching and concern. It's the past emotional ties to the opposition. Uh, in the past, emotional ties to the opposition have happened and caused all sorts of difficulties including divorce, deception and disciplinary charges. While it is not my place to moralise, one should try to avoid the opposite sex for as long as possible. Well, we know that's not true, even though that's written in the manual. We know that people are purposefully sought out to be targeted for relationships. 
So just because Lambert wrote that doesn't really, you know, there's a lot of denial, I reckon. The free love attitudes of the 60s and 70s had largely disappeared in the minds of the extremists following herpes, hepatitis and AIDS. However, if you are doing your job properly, men and women in the field will experience occasional approaches from males and females, straight and gay. Avoid the straight gay, uh, avoiding the straight gay problem is relatively simple, but no one should, uh, but one should never use the, the excuse of homosexuality to avoid a heterosexual partner. Not only will your behaviour be wholly inconsistent, but you may well find the closet and out homosexuals making a beeline for you. Uh, in a similar vein, don't use the excuse of being HIV positive as a reason for avoiding sexual contact. You simply cannot maintain the attitudes of a person with HIV unless you know someone with the condition and you may still face propos propos propositioning from wearies who are genuinely afflicted. Uh, while you may try to avoid any sexual encounter, there may come a time when your lack of interest may become suspicious. Ah, okay, so, the, you know, there wasn't all just banging everyone around. <laughs> we have to be honest about that, you know what I mean? Right. We have to be, we have to be, you know, take it all in on board. Um, options are fraught with difficulty and you must make your own mind up about how to proceed. If you have no other option but to become involved with a wary, you should try to have fleeting, dis disastrous relationships with individuals who are not important to your sources of information. Again, just people that are might might be a bit fragile, getting used. Imagine I can imagine the type of women who've already been through a lot that are just getting used to make someone's cover story look good. It's not right, man. Right. Um <clears throat> one cannot be involved with wearing a relationship for yeah, without risking serious consequences. Involvement in crime. Now Bob Lambert, before I go on, Bob Lambert was accused of planting a exploding device in the uh in the store what store was it somewhere by oxford circus many years ago or piccadilly i think it was i forgot what the store was but it was like an animal rights campaign a fur fur coach he put the device under loads of fur coach anyway um some field officers will be fortunate in that their tour will never bring them in to the realms of confidential Memo 4, dealing with participating informants. Stated simply, you cannot take part in crime unless you have no part in planning an incident and take a minor part in the crime itself. So I've got to stop here, but this is all changed. At no time can you instigate counsel or proceed others to commit a crime. But we've got to remember this is an old document. Oh, sorry. We've got to remember this is an old document. And if you remember anything from this whole talk, I'm going to say there's one thing. If you don't know what chiz is if you've never heard of Chiz, never heard of Chiz Law, you need to get clued up on that. So Chiz is covert human intelligence sources. So there's law being passed recently, and, and obviously they've got so-called backstops and safeguarding, but I'm not convinced. Uh, laws have passed recently, which basically make it legal. It, it, it's not what the security services haven't done all along, but they've made it legal to commit crime, any crime, and get away with it. No questions asked, no inquiry, no court case, nothing. It's a really scary place to be in, and we've got to be honest with it. If you don't know what is covert human intelligence sources, check it all out because it doesn't just go through the police. It goes through other agencies as well. You even even to the point where it could be the Food Standards Agency, the Gambling Commission. These are all actually parts officially part of the Chis um, umbrella of who's able to use it. Um. You know, it's not just the police, it's, it's massive now. So anyway, anyway, the above sentiments are laudable, but the boundary between right and wrong in the SDS arena is never as clear cut as the provisions of Con Memo 4 would have us believe. Yeah, I'll interject them then. So check out a book called Undercover. I can't remember it's by now. I've got it somewhere, is it? Somewhere around here. Oh, I can't remember where I've put it, but I've got, got a book, great book called Undercover. Um... And it uh, tells you about these officers that were like, they were running their own squat parties. So there was undercover, these these undercover officers running squat parties, selling uh, class A's, the lot. Um, loads, man. Um, 
if at any time your organisation invites you to break the law, you must be prepared to take whatever advice comes from your supervisors and your colleagues. If you take part in criminal acts without the office being made aware of such a likelihood, you risk leaving the squad earlier than you expected. Loads went rogue, didn't they? Loads. If you are in a position where you either take part in crime or face immediate personal danger from your organisation, good sense dictates that self-preservation is the order of the day. If you survive such an encounter, the office will expect a full and frank debrief. Uh, arrest. <clears throat> five, section 5, 8, arrest. Um, it's becoming more and more likely that an SDS operative will face arrest during his or her tour. With the change in public order legislation following the introduction of the Criminal Justice and Public Order Act 1994, we will all face the real possibility of arrest, again, which has changed recently due to the Chis law. Um, from simple fly posting up to recordable criminal offences such as criminal trespass, assault or burglary. Additionally, the chance of being fitted up by unscrupulous officers is a real, if rare, event. Thankfully, senior management seem prepared to grasp this nettle and appear prepared to support an operative through such an eventuality. One bone of contention is that if arrested, one should plead guilty and cop the fine. Groups such as the Hunt Saboteurs and the ALF will not accept such an approach to arrest in the current climate and expect a colleague to plead not guilty. Fight the case and, uh, strongly and if the case is won, the arresting officer's force will face a claim for compensation in the civil court. More and more groups are following this tendency and unless you intend to fail to appear at court, management should support the field officer's appraisal of his situation. Each case must be looked at on its merits, so do not expect that you will be able to follow a course of action which will be accepted by your wearies. Mm. Right, five, eight, three, one second. Having painted the worst picture, I must say that arrest is not difficult to cope with. One should never allow one's desire to assist a fellow officer in an investigation to impede your anti-establishment attitudes. Exposing your real self to an officer, particularly to one in a different force, causes serious problems for our security and must be avoided. Um, a former officer found the stress of being arrested too much to bear and unburdened himself to the arresting officer. Thankfully, the arrest took place within the MPD, but such exposure is clearly dangerous. It must be stated, however, that most of us who have been arrested have quite enjoyed the experience. It is not difficult to give your name, date of birth and address, then say no comment to any further questions. You may spend from six to 12 hours in a cell, but you are in no danger and the wearers will find it harder to believe any rumours that you are an infiltrator you have, after you've gone through an arrest and a court appearance. <clears throat> One second, I'll just go uh, do something here. Oh, oh yeah, sorry, my trying to block someone. There we go, the upstairs gone. Right, um, at the police station, we are allowed one telephone call. If you are under no pressure, then one should not contact the office until you are released. Instead, you could ring a wary and ask them to bring food or ask them if they know of a good solicitor or good field craft. However, if you are facing more serious charges and the potential of remaining in police custody or being remanded from the magistrate's court, ringing the emergency mobile may be the only way you can resolve any difficulties. And number five, nine, boredom. It must seem odd to consider the possibility of facing boredom in this sort of work, but boredom is as much part of the experience as the exciting bits. You should always be prepared for the tedium of waiting for a wary to knock on your door sitting outside a police station for 12 hours until your last comrade is released or taking part in a week of mind them in discussions on political theory. And there's a section here which is highly redacted about being compromised. Um, there may well come a time when the wearies challenge your carefully researched background. Such attacks often follow a mistake on your part, a personal disagreement with a wary who calls you an infiltrator to get back at you or simple bad luck when police appear to be taking a course of action which the wearers believe has been initiated by an infiltrator. Some groups even have a policy of turning on a new recruit and denouncing them as an infiltrator in order to test the individual's response to the allegation. Not being there myself, but I feel like I've been close to it. <laughs> Where, 
where you say kind of where we so this is after a redaction and um, occasionally a group will check with St Catherine's House for a birth certificate as has been said in paragraph 318 a former field officer has been presented with his own death who has been presented with his own deceased certificate has been asked to leave but on but on another occasion the wearers have been unable to interpret the records at St Catherine's and make allegations of you lying about your identity an allegation which can be disproved by a simple fluid certificate in your possession. Is it just me? It's hard to... I'm reading this and it sounds... Sometimes it's like... I'm reading it I'm thinking, oh, it sounded like it's not making sense. But it's because I think my mind's processing while I'm reading. I'm glad I've recorded this on YouTube because I can have a little listen back to it all then. About all this stuff going on in my mind about running the line. You know, um, <clears throat> At the end of the day, a wearer who is suspicious of you may never be able to trust you fully after the seeds of doubt have been sown. Nevertheless, as long as you remain consistent and keep to your prepared story, you will still be able to operate in the field and gain valuable intelligence. In real life, people fall out of each other and you should regard any coolness from a former comrade on that level and find another buddy to run with in future. Okay. Um. If the group you have infiltrated believes that you are a spy and as proof of it, they will most definitely make it clear that you are no longer welcome. At this stage, it is best to cut your losses and move away from them. Some organisations will simply dismiss you from their presence, while others may threaten exposure to the newspapers or even severe physical violence. The further you gain their trust, the more likely is the latter response. Feel free, I'm going to say the old TikTok jargon. Tap the like, guys. Tap the like, guys. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. Where? Freedom, that's where. <laughs> All right. Well, just realisation, I think. All right, living a normal life. Introduction. The main thrust of the trade calf manual, manual concentrates on how to infiltrate extremist groups. And the equally important part of the trade craft is to allow yourself to live as much of a normal life as possible during the tour. Soon after you meet your wearies, you realise how difficult it could be to explain away your real partner and family should you bump into a comrade. The difficulties could include friends and workmates of your partner and wider family. One officer has been exposed where his girlfriend was showing photographs of her holiday to workmates. One was a member of an extremist group who recognised a boyfriend, the policeman, as a comrade and the officer's tour was compromised. And then the last of that is redacted. It probably mentions the name of the officer, I should imagine. Um, right, so I did cold coffee, rank in it, but whatever. Right. As your tour continues, you develop a sense of security and your false identity. Paradoxically, you begin to feel vulnerable when you are with your partner at family gatherings in public places, at your partner's workplace, when picking the children up from school and when you were invited to friends' parties. This is good for any writers, fellow writers like myself out there. <laughs> uh, think for a possible scenario of meeting a wary while shopping with your partner and come up with a decent excuse that both of you and your partner rehearse. When you go to a new place, keep your eyes open and if you know beforehand that there is a slight likelihood of meeting a comrade, Walk separately so you can, if necessarily, revert to your duff identity. It is also a good idea to make prior arrangements to meet up with your partner later at a rendezvous point nearby. Six to safe areas. <clears throat> the easiest way to minimise the chances of compromising your identity is to avoid bandit country completely. You put bandit country in commas as if, like, you know, where you are, where you're posted, I think. Some groups operate in a small locality while others are spread out. London wide or even through the United Kingdom. You will have to discover where your close comrades live, work, shop, campaign and have a social life so that a chance encounter becomes less and less likely. Some areas of London, such as central London and the notorious inner London boroughs are best avoided altogether, particularly the popular trendy areas such as Camden Market, the East End, Islington and Brixton. I'm not too sure about that. Right. <laughs> While no one area can be regarded as totally safe, you'll be too, you'll soon appreciate those areas where confrontation is unlikely. Each operative will have to avoid different places due to the nature of their respective organisations, and it is not proposed to list them here. 
Always bear in mind that there is extreme dif it is extremely difficult to explain to a wary while while you are pushing a pram and holding the hand of a toddler who calls you daddy when they know you have no children. I bet that's happened loads. Mode of transport. While you are engaged in SDS work, it is inadvisable to use the tube unless you have prepared a cover story for your travel. Okay. Yeah, it's mad. It is actually. You do bump into people you don't expect on the tube. Uh, when you are driving in your own car, keep clear of those areas where a wary may catch sight of you behind the wheel. Chance sighting in these circumstances is unlikely, but more than one officer has told stories of stopping at a zebra crossing only to see close comrades and fellow wearies passing less than five feet from the windscreen. <laughs> one of the safest forms of transport in bandit country is by black cab. Yeah, but who... Really? I can never afford a black cab. <laughs> the drivers are unlikely to be connected to an extremist group and the windows are tinted or blacked out. Taxi fares may be high, but the alternative doesn't bear thinking about. And then we've got a whole section of reductions to 652. We've still got loads. I might actually have to stop at some point because I'm quite hungry. Right. Uh, when you settle down into a work routine, you will find a few hours during the day free to spend at home with your families, with your family. If your partner works in a nine to five job, it is unlikely nine to five job. It is unlikely that they will see each other during the day and at week. You will see each other during the day and at weekends. So make sure you have a free evening or two to spend together. You must find ways of working free time into your work routine, or you find the duff lifestyle taking over your own. Which again has happened. People like Mark Kennedy, they posted so much more into their activist monitoring roles. I bet it's caused so many family breakdowns and they've. Loads. This is a systemic issue which is affecting both the activists and police officers. It's mad, it's mad. Um, there is no doubt that partners find your unavailability the most difficult part of your tour, so make every effort to spend time together on a regular basis. The Duff lifestyle may force you to spend periods of intense activity away from home, so make allowances for these periods. <clears throat> target it oh we are target individuals near home address this is section six very occasionally you may find close comrades moving close to your own home at the beginning of your tour it helps to do uh sb checks which is dbs checks i think no, on the neighboring oh no on the neighboring streets around your home so you will be aware of any extremists nearby However, once you are committed to the field, you may find unknown activists who live nearby or wearies may move into your area at some point during your tour. It's possible to cope with one wary close to home, but there may come a stage in your tour that you become surrounded by wearies or a wary suddenly moves very close to your home address. These instances are extremely difficult to handle in the short term. You may be able to return to your home in the early hours and avoid going out in your home unless it's dark by wearing a full-face motorcycle helmet or voluminous coat with a hood. Obviously, such difficulties cannot be tolerated for long. You become a prisoner in your own home, and the danger of meeting a wary in your real life becomes a reality. Generally, the first time you meet a wary in these circumstances is when you bump into the wary or see him from a distance and duck out of you in time. You may be able to explain why you are there once, but further meetings are impossible to explain. Occasionally, we may hear from another officer that Wary is moving. Oh, I'm a battery man. Uh, Wary is moving near your to your home. Thankfully, the officer is prepared to deal with such difficulties at short notice or with long notice. In the latter case, as soon as the problem comes to notice, you should discuss your options with the office. The response to such a problem is varied, dependent on the closeness of your friendship between you and the Wary. Your desire to continue in the field or to leave and whether you're prepared to be moved from your home into the police accommodation or rent your property. Right, so I'm going to leave it with section seven. Uh, section seven I'm going to leave, which is special difficulties involving the target group. But So I'm doing all this from a little tablet. Everything I do, so before I quit this live, do check out some of my things, maybe my music or something. Um, yeah. Check out what I do. 
really it's all done low budget mega low budget great to great to um get people behind me at some point so check out what i've got like, loads of music and things like that might even you know i'm not doing this for money but i'm just saying i'm doing this on mega low budget my old tablet is about to run out of battery so i've got to stop the large right so yeah but um i hope i'm glad that i've had the opportunity to talk about this from real research documents because there's so many people that want to shut you down want to tell you that it's all in your head it doesn't exist so i'm just going to end the youtube stream here really bad that i've been having me a uh, little sticks in uh, while live on youtube and it's no surprise that not a single comment not a single viewer so if you don't know this is what i've been doing for years i've been doing poetry i've been doing videos for years the majority of time it's absolute no support from hardly a person it's been absolutely crazy so thank you everyone on tiktok um because this has been the first time in my life i haven't felt completely shadow banned do consider getting behind me if you see me on live next time. Thanks for anyone who's given us a like and all that. Um, yeah. So take care, folks. Yeah, man. And if you do want to help support me, help me get through the weekend and release it. I have got a load of projects coming up. Um, you want to get behind me? There's a PayPal link somewhere, paypal.me forward slash Ben Westwood UK. Even if anyone wants to send us a quid, trust me, it helps. Anyway, um, but also what I did want to say is check out a book coming out by Sebastian Baker. If you care about the world and you care about some things that aren't being dealt with properly, and I'm sure there's a couple of topics that come straight to your head, please check out a book that's about to be released called Where Prayers Can Lead by Sebastian Baker. I do know that I've been asking where I can get a copy of the paperback. And the paperback will be listed from the first, but apparently it might be out a bit earlier. The Kindle thing's already on there. But protecting children is what you care about and all that. Um, definitely check out where prayers can lead by Sebastian Baker. Um, so I'm going to cut my laptop off now. Take care of if anybody ever watches this on YouTube in the future which currently we've got no likes, no viewers. What is going on? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's been my life on YouTube for years. I'm pretty certain I'm shadow banned. Pretty certain I'm blacklisted. Um, that's an easy excuse, I know. But 